everybody. Um, first of all, I do want to acknowledge the Coast Salish territory that we own and particularly thank Burn Jacks, Chief Burn Jacks, for sending that video. I went out and met with him yesterday. He really regretted not being here. I also sent invitations to all of the other Saanich nations as well as the Halkomenum nations over on the other side of the island. Um, and due to ferry times, it just wasn't convenient for folks to come over. And I also want to thank George and the Islands Trust for the leadership that they have been showing on this issue. Uh, also in the organizing, I contacted Elizabeth May and Gary Holman around the National Energy Board process, and when we get to the Q&A, if we still have time for that, uh, I have some statements from them that we can read out. So I'm actually going to take us north for a few minutes um, to the Great Bear Rainforest. Over the last few years, we've heard a lot about Enbridge. The pipeline across northern BC that would bring tankers through the Great Bear Rainforest. You may have heard the stories of what it's like to sit in the rain and watch a spirit bear. About the wolves that eat salmon. Or how the salmon provide food for even the trees. You may have heard the stories from First Nations. About what a spill would do to their cultures, their communities, their very lives. I and so many others, and probably so many of you, have committed to doing all we can to stop the Enbridge pipeline, to keep oil tankers out of the Great Bear Rainforest. We've been standing with coastal First Nations in northern communities. We've been raising awareness in our own communities. We've been in the streets. And we've been speaking our minds to the Joint Review Panel. Anybody here speak to the Joint Review Panel? Oh yeah, there's a few of you. So, no doubt, thanks to many of you, you know, the opposition has been loud and clear. But our federal government does not seem to be taking no for an answer. Now is the crucial time to be speaking out on Enbridge. It continues to be a crucial time to speak out on Enbridge. The Joint Review Panel will be making a recommendation to the federal government by the end of the year, and then Cabinet has up to 90 days to make a decision. In response to Harper's latest pipeline push to send ministers out here to convince us that these pipelines are in our interest, Granchi Stuart Phillip from the Union of BC Indian Chiefs is calling us to action, as you see in this photo. And just, you know, let's also not forget about the multitude of proposals for LNG terminals that would bring over a thousand LNG tankers through the waters of the Great Bear Rainforest every year, the same waters that Enbridge tankers are proposed to travel. So we need to keep speaking up to keep all tankers out of the Great Bear Rainforest. And then now, of course, as you've been hearing, at the same time, we learn about this other pipeline, the Kinder Morgan pipeline, and the tankers that would move through these waters that we call home. You live here, you know what's at stake. Stopping these pipelines is an environmental issue. It's a jobs issue. Pipelines are not job creators unless you want jobs in oil spill cleanup. It's a human rights issue. It's about respecting First Nations decision-making authority the 160 First Nations that have banned tar sands crude from traveling through their lands and waters. Coastal First Nations have declared a ban on tankers in the Great Bear Rainforest. First Nations who live in the tar sands are dying of rare cancers. People are dying. We need to stand with them. This is a human rights issue. And it's a question of whether we think that people should, who live here should have a say over what happens here. And ultimately, this is a question of life as we know it, because we're talking about climate change. Owen talked about this a bit, so I won't really go into it. But we know that any oil that doesn't spill from the pipeline or tanker will spill into the atmosphere when it is burned. Climate change is not abstract, it's not some future thing. It's game on, it's now, it's happening. The impacts to BC are ocean acidification, loss of species, flooding, sea level rise. It's scary. It sounds scary because it is scary. But it's not too late to choose a different future. These are the most important three numbers that you need to know about climate change. Just quickly, this is from Bill McKibben. Two degrees Celsius, that's the amount of warming that we can safely tolerate to maintain ecosystems more or less how we know them. 
To stay within that warming, we have a carbon budget, 565 gigatons of carbon. That's what we globally can burn and stay within that amount of warming. But if you add up all of the known fossil fuel reserves in the world, you get the bottom number, which I can't quite read, but something like 2,700 gigatons. So what does that mean? That means the science is very clear. If we want to avoid catastrophic global warming, we need to keep most of these fossil fuels in the ground. So we face a choice, a choice about what kind of future we want to live in. And yet, the science is clear, but there's this long list of companies with all these proposals wanting to expand the tar sands and ship diluted bitumen around the world. But for two of those pipeline proposals, and at least one of the rail proposals, we haven't talked about rail yet, but there are also rail proposals, BC is in the way. And so those of us here, we have a responsibility, not just to this coast, but to the world, to keep on getting in the way. And don't let anyone tell you that this is just about saying no. Because when we say no to tankers, there's so much to say yes to. We're saying yes to a livable climate, yes to salmon, yes to good jobs, yes to a future where dinner can still be pulled from the ocean. If we took the $5 billion that's being invested in the Enbridge pipeline, if we instead invested that in things like renewable energies, uh, energy efficient buildings, retrofits of buildings, transportation, that same $5 billion could produce as many as 20 times more jobs. This slide shows what $2.8 billion of investment could do for creating streetcar tracks in Vancouver. So we face a choice. Climate change is the challenge of our moment. And unfortunately, there are no easy fixes, no easy answers. There's no one thing that will magically transform our society off of our dependence on fossil fuels. Renewable energies are definitely an important part of the solution, but we also need to reduce our energy consumption. Everybody always asks me what the alternatives are. The onus is on all of us to contribute to this turning point we're living in, to envision and to build the low carbon future. We can make changes in our own lives, we can eat more local food, we can fly less. These things are really important, and yet at the same time, our solutions need to match the scale of the problem. We need more systemic change. We can lobby our governments to remove subsidies for oil and gas. We can support divestment campaigns and take our money out of the oil and gas industry. If you check out Fossil Fuel Canada for more information on divestment campaigns. We can build the future that we want to live in. Sorry, I'm missing a slide, I'll leave it there. With sustainable fisheries, ecosystem-based forestry, renewable energies, local transportation. A future where decisions about the land are made by people who live on the land. So we can do all of those things, and at the same time, we need to keep saying no to these projects that would lead to climate change and oil spills. And I truly believe that we can stop the Enbridge and the Kinder Morgan pipelines, but I'm not going to stand here and tell you that any of this will be easy. We are up against a global oil industry and a federal government that is turning our country into a petrostate. We're starting to see what making decisions based on oil looks like. It looks like muzzling scientists, gutting environmental laws, scaling back public participation, continuing to deny Aboriginal title and rights, undermining our democracy, and giving away our rights through free trade ag agreements. So if we want to choose our future, we're going to need to fight for it at the polls, in the media, in corporate shareholder meetings, and in the streets. And you know, learning about this stuff is hard. When we pay attention to what's happening in the world around us, it can be upsetting, it can feel overwhelming. 
To be strong and effective to speak our truth, we need to recognize the sadness that lies underneath as well as the hope. So as we respond to this challenge that we're up against, be sure to take care of yourself and each other. And then organize, because this is our home that we're talking about, and I, for one, am not going to sit quietly. So how to get involved? If you want to get involved, there's no right or wrong way. Do what you have energy for. For each of us, that's going to look different. We can lobby governments. We can build the alternatives. We can build alliances. Reach out to unlikely allies in this community. Think about who's not here tonight, who could be. Find ways to work together, because it's not just our environment that's under attack right now. And we're stronger if we stand together. On October 7th, Idle No More has declared a big day of action. Show up, be there, organize something on the island in support. Owen talked about power shift. It is for people aged 16 to 30, uh, but older people will not be turned away. Consider sponsoring young people in your life, or donate. Donate so that youth from impacted communities on the front lines can travel to Victoria to be inspired, to get involved, to go home and make change happen in their communities. Power shift needs your support. You can sign up to get more information from all of our organizations. We all have online actions and petitions and all of that. If you choose to, you know, if you're already involved, I would invite you to do more, to step outside your comfort zone a little bit or maybe a lot. Because one thing is clear, we need to do more. And however, you choose to get involved, know that we need all hands on deck. So I found this quote today. I was thinking about, you know, when we see our country turning into a petrostate, when we see our climate sliding into chaos with all the social and environmental upheaval that both those things are causing, do we respond politely and hope that things improve? Or do we respond with the moral outrage that the youth of our time are starting to show, as you can see in this quote? And in and amongst everything we do, let's dream the impossible. Let's not just stop at stopping tankers. Let's transition our society off of fossil fuels. We can look to history for inspiration, for moments when the impossible happened. So I have hope. I have hope that if we work together, we can do this. We can shift away from our dependence on fossil fuels. We can build a world that is based in respect for one another and for the earth. And I look forward to walking down that path with you. Thank you.